Hello and welcome to the Ditton Works YouTube channel. Behind me there are my Spendor Classic 2.3s and behind them, over there, are Harveth Compact 7 ES3s. And today we're going to pit them against each other. Now this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Both loudspeakers are very similar in design, in concept, in history. Both of the founders of respective companies, Dudley Harwood for Harbeth, Spencer Hughes for Spendor, both started working on acoustic design at the BBC. Now there's a few changes today. My Quad Artera preamp is out of the system and I've fitted a Music First Audio Baby Reference V2 Passive Preamplifier. The Townsend Super Tweeters, as awesome as they are, I'm going to remove those from the Spendor Classic 2.3s today because I want to pit these loudspeakers in their sort of standard form. I will be using Townsend I Sold a Loudspeaker Cable because realistically I want to get every single nuance that is possible to get out of either of these pairs of loudspeakers to make this the best test to determine what comes out of it. I'll catch you in a minute. So first up, Harbeth. Harbeth was founded by Dudley Harwood, and he is also the father, if you like, of polypropylene. So all of his designs after leaving the BBC featured polypropylene. Now he did, and was always on a quest for new materials, discover a new wonder material, if you like, called TPX. But what he didn't realize is TPX came with quite a lot of manufacturing difficulties. In comes Alan Shaw. Alan Shaw, who worked for a Japanese transistor company, I believe, has absolutely massively increased the reputation and production of Harbeth. He's done a wonderful job. Now, his first loudspeaker was the Harbeth HL Compact, which means these Compact 7 ES3s and the ones that come after it are basically his first loudspeaker design and I have read somewhere that he has a soft spot for the Compact 7s and it makes sense it was his first loudspeaker for Harbeth. Now there's some interesting things about Dudley Harwood and I'm not sure if all of these are true but apparently due to his religious beliefs he wouldn't ever listen to music through any of his loudspeakers he was designing he would just listen to voice and apparently it was the voice of his wife Elizabeth. So one of the tests I'm going to do today is play voice through these loudspeakers because human voice not only has Harbeth said about this, Spendor say about this as well. I know Derek Hughes plays one inch tapes of his father in a BBC echoic chamber. So voice, and this may be where the word voicing comes from, but human voice is critically important to the design of a loudspeaker. And I mentioned this in my LS35A video that the human ear is so sensitive and so finely tuned due to evolution to the sound of voice it hasn't had enough time to evolve to the sound of music music's nowhere near as old as speech so tuning voicing a loudspeaker to human voice has got to be one of the best ways of doing it and if you can get everything else to fall into place around that then you should have a very good sounding loudspeaker and I've got to admit that Spendor and now Harbeth have always hailed as being one of my favourite types of loudspeakers because they have that BBC heritage that you're able to lean on all of that research and development from an enormous company that had some of the greatest minds in acoustic design working together. Now that's not to say there haven't separately been genius people working on loudspeakers, there has. Stuart Tyler is one. Some of the guys from Celestian are another. In more recent times, Alan Clark at Alcris Audio, very clever guy, very talented guy. But in this instance, all of these speakers are drawing from the wealth and riches of the clever people at the BBC. So let's do some tests. We're not gonna just do music. We're gonna do some tests to see and hear what the differences are between these two loudspeakers. These are Harbeth Compact 7 ES3 loudspeakers. These are Harbeth Compact 7 ES3 loudspeakers. These are Harbeth Compact 7 ES3 loudspeakers. 
These are Spendor Classic 2.3 loudspeakers. These are Spendor Classic 2.3 loudspeakers. These are Spendor Classic 2.3 loudspeakers. Okay, so side by side comparison, both two way loudspeakers, both lossy cabinet designs, both front ported, both 8 inch drivers. There are a lot of similarities, but there are also an awful lot of differences. So this really shiny finish is the radial cone technology. It's an incredibly clever way, I presume, of injection molding. The HF unit's quite interesting. I first thought, hmm, these look like a metal dome tweeter, but I think it's a soft dome tweeter with some kind of lensing or lens on the top there. Um, very unusual, I've not seen one of those before, and um, with a nice protective grille over the front. With the Spendors, it's a CAS HF unit tuned by Spendor, and like I said, it's Spendor designed but CAS chassis. Beautiful cabinet work on both of them, they're both book matched. That's quite important to me that the veneer is absolutely book matched. There's one thing I will say about the Harbeths. Although they're very neat, the grills are a bit of a bugger to get off because they fit into this sort of recessed slot at the front. And I think they're probably meant to be run in place. On the Spendor Classic 2.3s, they've got those concealed magnets, so the grills just clip into place nicely. However, I do run these with the grills off. So I've been running the grills off on both. Both have phase caps. Very similar size ports, dimensions are similar, the Classic 2.3 is slightly bigger, and on its correct stand sits somewhat lower than the Harbeth. Now, I've put the Harbeths on 60cm something solid stands. I do have some 50cm stands, but a friend of mine is borrowing them, so I've had to use these. But, in all honesty, they seem to work on those something solid stands. I'm a big fan of those stands. Nice open frame stands means the bottom of the cabinet can breathe. Same on these underneath the cabinet. Okay, I've done some voice comparisons. Let's do some music comparisons because I'm sure that's what everybody's dying to hear the difference. So, like I said, no super tweeters involved, but we will be using that lovely passive preamp, which I'll be doing a full review on probably next week. There'll be no Townsend super tweeters. It wouldn't be fair unless I ran them on both. I probably will experiment with that in my own time. And I am using Townsend's I solder speaker cable. Everything else in the system is the same. Still the same mains leads, still the Meridian 557. I'm still using, uh, for the music test, I'll probably use my TAC Transport and my Benchmark DAC one. Let's see what the differences are. <laughs> clean, very, very clean, very, very detailed loudspeakers. They really, really do extract the absolute most from the recording. The only area where they are slightly light is the bass, but that's what everybody says. But I wonder what they're comparing them to, because the bass is very deep, it's very tight, it's very coherent, it's very clear. Everything about it is good. They're just not quite as bass heavy as the Spendors are. I have had other loudspeakers in the past that would just wouldn't get close to the bass quality of the Harbeths, in all honesty, nowhere near it. They're very, very clean. It's really what they're all about. It's 
cleanliness, <laughs> if that's such a way of describing a loudspeaker. The HF detail is just so clean, very crisp, very clear. I'm not going to have the old cliche of I'm hearing things I've not heard before, but you're certainly hearing things in a little bit more Ford presented manner compared to the Spendals. They almost sound a little bit more like, dare I say, a Metal Dome tweeter. They're just very crisp. Mid-range, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. That radial cone technology obviously works. The mid-range capabilities of these loudspeakers are just spot on. And overall, I find them a joy to listen to. Moving over to the Spendors, the Spendors don't quite have the HF Zing clarity ultra detail, but certainly have way more low frequency power scale. They really fill in those lower octaves. I doubt you'd ever need an active subwoofer when you're running a pair of classic 2.3s, unless you had a very large room. Um, Mid-range, I'd probably give that to the Harbeth, I would. Sound staging is a difficult one. Um, the Harbeths image very, very well. So they've got probably very good off-axis response. Their imaging is very, very good. Their depth of sound stage isn't quite as good as the Spendor's. And I think the Spendor has that because of that rolled off HF. It's just presenting the higher frequencies slightly further back, which gives the impression that the percussionist is further back in the stage, gives it a better illusion of sound stage. However, at lower volumes, you are wanting for some of that extra detail that is possibly missing in the Spendors, but is very apparent in the Harbeths. That's why I use the Townsend Super Tweeters with the Spendors. They just, because you don't hear them, but it just fills in, just helps with that transition into the higher frequencies. It's just overall better tonal characteristics, particularly at lower volumes. I will try the Super Tweeters with the Harvest, but I honestly, I mean, it's not a case if you don't need them. They may improve it still further, but my first thought would be I wouldn't need them. I will run that experiment because I bet the Townsend Super Tweeters add another level to the Harbeths, but on initial listening, there's so much HF detail there, I don't really feel like you would need Super Tweeters. Um, what would I do? I mean, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place between these two loudspeakers. They're very similar. I think for the genre of music, or genres of music I listen to, I do enjoy some real low end slam, some real power in the bass. Something like the Neat Magisters had in spades, the Russell K's had in spades, but things maybe like my Proax Studio 100s or some of the SL series were lacking slightly. The Spendor have that, that initial impact and power presence you feel in the lower frequencies is very enjoyable. It's there on the Harbeths, but not in the same capacity. It's not as solid. And I don't want to poo-poo the Harbeths. It, there's nothing wrong with them at all. And if I just had to have one pair of loudspeakers, I would be over the moon with a pair of <laughs> any of the Harbeth HL7 all the way through to the Compact 7 ES3 XD, all of the other funny names Alan Shaw puts behind them. They're phenomenal. No two ways about it. Incredibly, incredibly joyful to listen to. They're musical, they time excellent, the imaging's fantastic as I've said. They're not fatiguing, so they haven't got that super, super sharp HF that some people moan about. They're not fatiguing, they've got that warmth. They've certainly got that warmth about them. They're not quite as warm as the Spendors though. And I don't know whether that's because they're a larger cabinet, it's obviously a different design but they're very close, very, very close. I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna pick because I've got both of them. <laughs> so any given time, I will switch them around. And if I'm looking or perhaps have a recording that has slightly lower detail and you just love that recording but it's just missing on the spindles, that's when I would switch over to the Harvest. If you had a recording that was the other way around, super bright, maybe I would prefer that on the Spendors. If I had a system that was super bright, you'd probably want the Spendors. If you had a super rolled off system, you'd probably want the Harbeth. 
it always comes down to this system matching, synergy, personal taste, what genre of music you prefer all the time. I've absolutely loved listening to these. I've loved comparing them. I've loved answering that question for me. And there is no definitive answer. I like them both. So that may be disappointing to some people, but I really do like them both. They're very, very good, both of them. Excellent loudspeakers. Take care, guys. I'll catch up with you soon.